Mr. Bernstein. I'm sorry. And Mr. Bernstein. Yes, and the last witness after that is Susan McCormick. Mr. Bernstein. Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me time to uh, tell my story today. Um, before we start, I did notice that Alan Freeberg was here from the disciplinary committee. I filed some complaints against him several months ago. Mr. Freeberg, you still here? You left? Yes. Hey, Mr. Yeah. Freeberg, how you doing? And so I'd like the committee to look into where the missing complaints against him and Mr. Reardon are. They were filed several months ago. There's procedures to this. They're not following those. So if you could uh, maybe find out where the uh, complaints are at this time, that would be great. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. My, you'll take care of that for me, right? I can catch his first name. Elliot Bernstein. Thank you. Um, my story involves widespread corruption in the New York courts and New York investigatory bodies that have utterly failed in their civic duties to protect my rights and in fact have become the actual nemesis that blocks my rights. Right. My name is Elliot Bernstein. I reside in Boca Raton, Florida, and I flew here to New York for the first hearings on June 8th and was prepared to testify when the coup occurred. I've traveled here under a medical treatment program to tell you about the saga of my company as I view it and what has earned the moniker Patent Gate and its relation to the whistleblower case of Christine Anderson involving the New York courts and the disciplinary. I remind all of you of the conflict of interest disclosure forms I sent to this body and request that any and all conflicts be appropriately disclosed during the hearings or immediately hereafter. I am a husband and the father of three beautiful children, boys, and I'm also an inventor of the idea of technologies which involve video and image compression, commonly referred to as mathematical scaling formulas, which are used on virtually all digital imaging and video devices. For example, the Hubble Space Telescope, my personal favorite, providing views into the universe and time like never seen before, using a technology that allows you to zoom on images without pixelation, as it was commonly referred to prior to my solving for that. The technologies are used on, by every internet service provider in the world that hosts a video, every computer that's playing a video. Um, all digital television service providers use it. Mass of defense applications, such as space and flight simulators, use the technologies. Medical imaging devices use the technologies. Mapping programs such as Google Earth, Google Maps, Google Street View all use my technologies. Of course, I'm not getting paid for any of this, by the way. And the reason for that is because I hired patent lawyers. And we'll get into that. My technologies are now the subject of a trillion dollar, yes, a trillion dollar lawsuit in federal court here in New York State as a result of theft, fraud, and other wrongful actions against my companies and myself, including death threats and an attempted murder. Yes, an attempted murder against my family by way of a car bombing of our family minivan in Boynton Beach, Florida, as my, not Iraq, mind you, as my wife Candace and I were preparing to file papers against these same folks. Thus, please note the seriousness of my claims here as attempted murder is a very serious charge. Full pictorial evidence of the car bombing, which was so strong it took out three cars next to it, can be found at www.iviewit.tv. It should be noted that the crimes to steal my intellectual properties were committed by my trusted lawyers and accountants whom were retained to protect my inventions and instead fraudulently filed my inventions in others' names, 
including the patent attorney's own name. One patent attorney putting 90 plus patents into his own name, very long verse, while retained by my company during the time he was retained by my company. Yes, a patent attorney patenting his client's inventions in his own name, who it appears became more inventive than Edison after meeting me. You may think after hearing about a car bombing that safety is my number one concern, but it's not. Bringing down the corruption that's uh, infested. Gal Shaw, we're here, uh, we don't need the, the, the cameras. I know you're videotaping everything, but I don't think you, you need to have that camera on those two gentlemen, so. Well, I'm making a documentary. No, I know you're making a documentary, but you know, this is a, a hearing, although it's open to the public, and we want to continue with these hearings. All right, Mr. Gal Shaw. Gallison. Gallison. I'm sorry, Mr. Gallison. I'm sorry. I do think it's my right. It's I know that. I, I have. I have allowed you to do that for many, many times. It's my right, and you I have to allow me to. I can understand that. Exercise my rights. I can understand that, but at the same time, I don't want it to become a nuisance to a lot of people in here. Okay. I don't think it's a nuisance to anybody. It's not a camera. Nobody's nobody's shoots beams or anything. It just takes the picture. I wish you would allow the gentleman to continue documenting this hearing. It's not distracting anyone. He's quiet. No, no, that, 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 that's, that's right. Let, 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 let me make it clear. There's no problem documenting because we're having documenting. But if you're documenting this hearing, yes. But if you're singling out individuals, I have a problem with it. Okay? So that's my problem. Well, so if you, if you if you want I'm me to. Lots of people. If, if, if you want me to continue to have a hearing and keep this matter open to the public, I will, okay, but I won't settle for... Sir, with all respect, if I film these two gentlemen, you will stop having hearings. If I don't film the gentleman, you will continue having hearings? Yes. Sounds like Does anybody court. else find that strange and perhaps illegal? Yeah. Sounds like cool. No, I, I fully, I, I'm He should okay, allow me to pick this up after me because I've got a limited too. time here. Pardon? Okay, I've got enough of them anyway. Thank you. Yeah, Again, I was saying, uh, you think a car bombing is the important thing to me in protecting my children, but it's not. What's really important is bringing down this disgusting corruption in the courts by lawyers, by judges. And it's, it's out of control at this point. So my first priority is to pave the way for my children so that they don't have to pick up the battle and fight these uh, and I criminals that just came. Thank you, somebody, because it came to my head. I agree. That with I that. didn't say, but uh, you know, if we don't stop them, it's going to be our kids stopping them. So it's going to get worse. That's right. And so let me continue on. It should be noted here that information has surfaced from another Florida businessman, one of Florida's wealthiest individuals, a 70-year-old, 70-plus-year-old Monty Friedkin, that these very same criminals, disguised as lawyers from Proskauer and Foley Lardner had in fact pulled a similar attempted heist of his intellectual properties immediately prior to preying upon me and my companies, exhibiting an alleged criminal enterprise cloaked as law firms and lawyers stealing inventions from inventors. This was the basis for my filing a RICO action against the entities comprising the cr criminal enterprise as it was learned that several law firms and lawyers involved in the Friedkin attempted theft and my own were working together. Later it was learned that these powerfully connected law firms and lawyers had penetrated deep within the United States Patent Office mm -hmm. and other government agencies and that part of the criminal enterprise operates to block due process of any victims that may challenge them, infiltrating courts or investigatory agencies to block complaints against them similar to what the whistleblower Christine Anderson has previously testified about regarding obstruction of justice for favored lawyers within the department, destruction of documents, threats, coercion, etc. In fact, Anderson, my hero, in her original complaints, mentions the idea of companies in her original lawsuit filing <coughs> as one of the reasons leading to physical abuse and other crimes against her. In fact, my federal trillion dollar lawsuit was marked legally related by federal district court judge Sheriff Shinlin to federal whistleblower case Anderson 
who worked as a principal attorney at the Departmental Disciplinary Committee. As you should be aware, the Anderson whistleblower case has been slated for a public trial, currently slated for October 13th. Multiple attorneys regulated by the courts of New York, and specifically the New York First Department, have been involved in the IV of matters for nearly 10 years. Going back to 1998, when my technologies were first being tested, used, and in the process of securing patents and related intellectual property rights to protect them. The technologies were tested and used at Real 3D Ink Labs located on Lockheed Martin property in Orlando, Florida. Real 3D at the time was owned by Lockheed, the Intel Corporation, and Silicon Graphics. It should be noted here that Lockheed is the largest purveyor of digital imaging and video technologies on the planet Earth. Leading engineers at Real 3D who tested and used my technologies deemed them priceless, while other experts in the industry called them the holy grail of the internet, including favorable comments from Hassan Mia, an industry-recognized expert at the CAA Intel Multimedia Labs, which took the internet from a text-based medium to one with rich multimedia, where previously one, which previously was only banner ads and very small grainy images. Video really didn't exist in any usable form for internet applications due to the bandwidth limitations. The inventions were backbone in nature by providing the mathematical formula that permitted scaling and compression of video and solving for pixel distortion, and also sim simultaneously reduced bandwidth usage by 75%. Now, please, just think for a moment that 10 years ago, the technologies created a 75% increase in available bandwidth for transmission across the internet and television, which allowed video to be streamed or downloaded at full screen, full frame rate capabilities, commonly found today on every website. And due to the ability to transmit using the technologies at much lower bandwidths, the technologies opened the door for markets entirely new, such as internet video, cell phone videos, and video conferencing systems through the internet. Prior thought impossible. As for the effect the technologies had on television, for example, the bandwidth savings from scaling video from the prior interlacing methods used since the invention of television essentially permitted 75% more channels for content distribution on television. And I'm sure all of you can remember about 10 years ago, your channel bandwidth went up in your cable channels increased dramatically. That was due to the inventions. Thank you. Therefore, you have more Yankee games, more DVD channels. <coughs> you the man responsible for all that? I am. Thank you. I'm the man responsible, but not getting paid yet. But that we're working on that. OK. Uh, let me just skip, because I know you guys are on the time frame. The technology is used on everything. Did you? you know, we already went. Um, enter Proskauer Rose, the law firm. <laughs> Quickly. Disclaimer. <coughs> He's the work firm. Yes, I understand. And um, and I appreciate your upfront honesty and disclosure with that, by the way. That's a sign that's missing in the that's right. legal profession today. The conflicts of interest that are rampant, in my case, will blow you away here. I mean, this is some stuff. We, we, we find the head of the New York State Bar at one point, former. Stephen Crane handling complaints against himself at the First Department DDC while he's an officer of the DDC, with Tom Cahill covering it up, and thank God for another hero in this world, uh, Catherine O'Hagan Wolf. She exposed it. She she told me when she caught them lying and playing these games to go file a complaint with the First Department. I'll get to that in a moment. Let me take back to Proskauer. Quickly on the scene in Boca at the invention time was Proskauer Rose to patent the technologies. Now they didn't have a patent division at the time, but they didn't tell me that. They told me they were going back to New York to check with their, you know, uh, New York offices if they could uh, secure patents for me. What they did, for example, it was represented to the IVO company initially that attorney Kenneth Rubenstein was a Proskauer partner. To the contrary, reports showed Rubenstein was at the law firm Meltzer Lippi on Long Island at the time, one of the many 
named defendants in my trillion dollar RICO antitrust. Suit. What's the status of that RICO case? Um, it will, it's at the second circuit. Okay, so just to come on, Mr. Yevers, you know, don't, don't, we, we, you know, this is light. We don't want to be in darkness. <laughs> um, so, so, so what I want to find out is just getting what, what you're saying is the misconduct that was initiated by the attorneys. And since that period of time, you have made complaints to the disciplinary committee with respect to these attorneys? Oh, absolutely. And what what's, happened? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. At the federal patent bar, they're under investigation. In the New York courts, they got letters of recommendation. I don't know if that, you know, explains the difference of what's going on here, but under the same information that was presented to Hiriyan Motes, who's the director of the Office of Enrollment and Discipline, which oversights patent bar attorneys, when he looked at the damning information, such as patents in the wrong people's names, and the lawyers handing out intellectual property dockets to Wachovia Bank and hosts of other investors that were patently false and didn't match up with the documents on file at the patent office. In fact, on some patents that they had listed as my patents, I can't even get access to the information right now on those patents because they weren't filed in my name. I'm not the owner, I'm not the inventor, and I'm not the assignee. So Mr. Motes has directed me to take up action with Diane Feinstein, which I have, and to get those patents released to me so we can change the inventors, but because of privacy laws, I'm blocked right now, so we need an act of Congress to change that, and hopefully you can help me get that. Um, Diane Feinstein has been working on it and has contacted several of the federal authorities. Uh, federal authorities, the, the FBI, uh, the case investigator appears missing at the, this time with my files, according to the FBI. Uh, I'm only allowed to talk to the OPR of the FBI. Glenn Fine has referred me, I'm, are you familiar with Mr. Fine? He's the Inspector General of the Department of Justice. And so other agencies are, you know, other than he's missing, which seems a little hokey to me, I don't think he actually is missing with car bombing files, etc. And it was my understanding that he was going to Washington to work with Mr. Motes, who confirmed that the FBI was joining him on an investigation of lawyers who are committing fraud upon the United States Patent Office. It's a heavy crime. It's not just fraud against Elliot Bernstein and his family and shareholders. It's a crime against the United States by these lawyers. And penetrating the Patent Office is the end of free commerce in America if they're successful at it. In fact, the attorney that we were talking about from Proskauer, Kenneth Rubenstein, has created a patent pool, an anti-competitive, monopolistic patent pool, which uh, has stolen my technologies, commonly referred to as MPEG. Uh, Mr. Rubenstein, while acting as my counsel, first he was misrepresented. Let me get back to my statement because it'll help right there. Um, it turns out that Kenneth Rubenstein was an attorney admitted and regulated by the New York First Department. He was simultaneously involved with MPEG's patent pool that he was acting as in-house counsel for and was one of the founders of. While advising iViewit companies on their intellectual properties as retained patent counsel, which posed a competitive threat to his pools, my technologies, in fact, it might have extincted the MPEG LA technologies. And so Rubenstein, Prostauer, and Meltzer failed to put up any China wall to protect me, and instead did the exact opposite and allowed MPEG to use my IP for their benefit while using anti-competitive monopolistic practices to eliminate the inventors, like myself. No wonder the Justice Department has historically broken up patent pooling schemes using antitrust regulations, as this form of pooling works to deny mon pa inventors of their rights. And in the past, there have even been allegations of pooling schemes actually in the business of murdering inventors to steal their inventions or other such heinous crimes. Rubenstein, though, was initially misrepresented as a Proskauer partner. Once we discovered through investors, I believe from Goldman Sachs, 
that he was with Meltzer instead, Proskauer quickly purchased or acquired Rubinstein and the entire Meltzer department except Ray Joa, the guy who put the 90 patents in his name. And when they acquired Rubinstein, they acquired control of the MPEG patent pool. So now my lawyers are controlling the patent pool that's stealing my technology and they're profiting from it. So, I mean, just to, just to, just to wrap it up. Yeah. This year. Yeah. This year? Not right now. <laughs> and you have pending litigation. You have made complaints. Um, rest assured, uh, you don't think the complaints have been thoroughly followed through. No, I think Christine Anderson's right. They threw him in the garbage, shredded him, and then they beat her up to shut up about it. Okay. That's so, what I really think. But if you want to get into how this relates to the Bernard Madoff scandal, the Mark Dreyer scandal, and all of these massive financial scandals, you should let me continue because it also, what these guys at the First Department are doing by, you know, I'm now suing the First Department, uh, you know, 4,700 lawyers, uh, a few judges, a few Supreme Courts, uh, a, a whole lot of people involved in it. But what, the, what these clowns back here are doing to you is they're putting this state at a trillion dollar plus liability. And I don't think any of them are properly reporting the liabilities to state auditors and regulators. And you're going to have a, a, a meet off times 10,000 occur as liability to the state of New York. All because these guys are failing their duties. I mean, they're not here, but whatever. The, the bar should be a drinking establishment. Okay, that's fine. First, you wanted a suggestion, I'm going to make a suggestion. I don't know what in God's name these lawyers, and you're a lawyer, so I, I think you'll understand what I'm about to say. Blow up the bar association in the literal sense. Destroy it and then make every single violation of an attorney ethic or a judicial canon, whatever you want to call these things, violations of law. Oh, yeah. Let's send yeah. in. Yeah. Then send in some hard pipe hitting investigator who hates lawyers to investigate the lawyers and then prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. I don't know I don't know who these people think they are, but they're I pay their salaries and in situations like this I would fire them. They all should be fired and imprisoned for the nonsense they've been called. All right. I'm going to go off to Nick Raddick. Well done, Mr. Bernstein. Well done, Mr. Bernstein. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's have some sense of the core of the year. Please, 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 please. The last person, Susan McCormick. McCormick, the last person for the day. Are we coming back tomorrow? Thank you very much. Squeeze you in.